Sun Tzu once said that it is the worst policy of all to besiege walled cities, but he didn't have cool minis like these to do it. Welcome to another episode of the Gamesmiths Unboxing Series. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at WizKids 4D Settings War Machine Series, the Trebuchet and the Ballista. But before we head to the table, I just wanted to be perfectly clear that the Chinese absolutely did have siege engines available to them during Sun Tzu's lifetime, just not necessarily these siege engines. In today's episode, we're going to look at the WizKids 4D Setting War Machines the Trebuchet, and the Ballista. The 4D line of products are pre-painted terrain pieces designed to enhance the tabletop experience of players and GMs alike. Our first War Machine miniature set comes in the form of a Trebuchet. The box immediately has my attention because of all the contents, but also because of the HD mini stamp in the top left corner. I purchased this box from my local game store for about $52 Canadian. The case itself retails on the WizKids website for $39.99 US dollars, so the cost will vary depending on where in the world you live. The box contains one trebuchet, two mounds of stones, a single stone, two cheval de frise, and one half-orc engineer. This is a cheval de frise, although there are two, so technically it's a cheval de frise. These French-named anti-cavalry barricades consisted of a frame, sometimes just a simple log, covered with many projecting long spikes. The sculpt on these barricades is great, and I'm very happy with the paint job. The tree bark looks dark and natural, and so does the stripped wood's lighter brown finish. The pieces look pointy and dangerous. I've included the half-orc engineer mini for scale, but it comes with a small terrain base and not the standard one-inch base. I like the action contained within the pose for this miniature. The paint job is good enough for table use, though the details on the face are obscured by a wash that was added. The armor and the clothing look great too. There's a shine on the armor that transfers to the arms, which isn't good, but the pants, boots, and gloves have a definite leather-like finish. The stone mounds and the single stone are already shaped into round ammunition for the trebuchet. The purpose of these miniatures is obvious, but they could easily be used as cannonballs or other scatter terrain. My only real criticism is that the wash that was obviously added could have been applied more evenly to get down into all the nooks and grooves of the miniatures. The heart of this set is the trebuchet. This particular type of catapult is a counterweight trebuchet from around the 12th century. When I saw the box on the shelf I was immediately drawn to this piece. The obvious imperfections of the bending plastic, like the unnatural curve in the throwing or lever arm and the base, can be smoothed out. The payload sling is colored silver for some reason, maybe to make it look like chain link, which is very impractical for this kind of weapon. The sling should have been painted to look like lightweight netting, and at the very least deserved a light wash. Likewise, the rope needs to be recolored because it looks like chain. The wood structures on the war machine all have deep and obvious wood grain, which have a great coloration. All the metal joints and bands are well painted and stylized. Despite the warping of the plastic, I really do like this terrain piece. If any viewers have suggestions on how large pieces of plastic could be straightened out without damaging the paint job, we'd be very interested in seeing your ideas in the comments section down below. Now let's turn our attention to the other war machine box set, the Ballista. Once again, the contents of this box caught my attention. This War Machine box retails on the WizKids websites for $39.99 US dollars. And like the trebuchet, I found this box at my local game store for about $52 Canadian. The box contains one ballista, one pile of ballista bolts, two mantlets, two cheval de frise, and one human engineer. We have another pair of cheval de frise that are the same as those in the trebuchet box. The textures and colors really help sell these pieces as wood. An extra pair of these barricades will definitely help out on the game table. I've included the human mini engineer for scale, 
and like the half-orc is on a small terrain base instead of a standard 1-inch base. This mini is a great sculpt and well painted. The wash that was added definitely makes the engineer appear dirty and grimy. These large portable shields are called mantlets and were used for stopping projectiles in medieval warfare. These types of barricades are mounted on wheels so they can be moved around on the battlefield. The wheels on these miniatures are not functional, but their appearance does help with the illusion of the terrain piece. I'm very happy with the wood texture on these minis, but the bolts could have used a dark wash so they don't seem brand new. The main terrain piece in this war machine set is the ballista. The six metal arms or brachium are pure fantasy and add unnecessary complexity to the war machine. That being said, I think the extra arms look cool and make the ballista look more imposing and dangerous. The ballista itself is mounted on a ball and socket joint that connects to the base. While the joint is quite secure, it's not very sturdy and the ballista moves around quite a lot. To fix the problem, I would add something like Play-Doh or eraser shavings into the socket. The paint job on the metal, wood and rope components are all well done. I appreciate the great attention to detail on this terrain piece, and my only real criticism is the scale. The medium sized engineer seems to be much too small given the size of the ballista. Its scale seems much more suitable to a large based creature. The pile of bolts matches the bolts already loaded into the ballista and are straight. The illusion is spoiled when the bolts are warped. If the price point wasn't so high on these terrain pieces for me, I definitely would have purchased another pair. I could easily plan an encounter around my players having to seize control over one of these war machines. Conversely, they might have to defend the siege engine against saboteurs. Like with many of the WizKids pre-painted sets, I won't be surprised when these are released as unpainted sets for much cheaper. Maybe then I'll be able to pick up another pair of them. Overall, the good definitely outweighs the bad on these pieces. There weren't any joint line issues and the painting problems were minor on both pieces. If you're looking for siege engines for your tabletop RPG, I highly recommend the WizKids 4D setting War Machines Trebuchet and Ballista. If you'd like to support us here at the Gamesmith, there are a few ways you can do that. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, now's a great time. Hit the thumbs up button and give us a like. Ask a question or leave a comment below. Join us on social media like Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Please check out our website at thegamesmith.org. You can read our free monthly blog and purchase our awesome Gamesmith merchandise. Finally, you can join Patreon, which gives you access to content like our podcasts and my narrating the blogs. Your support in any form is much appreciated. Until next time, I'll see you at the table.